Before we start this video, do like and subscribe to our channel and not miss on any updates. So friends, as part of these introductory videos where I explain about uh, you know how you're supposed to study, what is the resources that we give, I gave me my background, I have attached the resources, you know, a bunch of stuff I have done in the first, uh, you know, in this particular chapter. There is one more aspect that you need to know, which is called calculator tricks. All of you have come from CA inter level, where, you know, in financial management chapter, in, uh, you know, advanced accounting, where you have done additions on calculator and all that, you know how to use the uh, GT function and all of that. At final level, uh, there are issues specifically with respect to uh, you know data sometimes being provided sometimes not being provided by the institute in some questions this has happened in the past uh, sometime in some of one of the questions that they have asked but it does not always happen and what i am referring to you will understand when we get to it sometimes they give uh, they ask you to find out the value of e power something and i am denoting it by x uh, usually they are supposed to give e power something value in the exam they sometimes if they do not give then what are you supposed to do that is one then they ask you to find out 1.888 power 1 by 10. Now our normal calculator, what you are seeing you know, in my hand which is what you will have or some variant of this can only compute square roots. So how are you going to compute the 10th root and this calculator also does not have this e power x functionality. All these are there in scientific calculators but you are not allowed scientific calculators, you are not allowed CFA calculators which you know which have all these functionalities. So I am going to teach you some shortcuts, do not ask me the logic and how it works and all of that. There are some blind tricks, blind tricks okay that you need to do in order to arrive at these numbers. This is also a remote scenario in which you may you know may have to use these uh, points. This happened I think once in November 23 paper or somewhere and once earlier where they gave some partial e value okay so at that point of time if you had known the calculator trick you could have used it right so let me first get to you know these two aspects i am not going to teach you basic gt computation and all of that that you can you would already know okay i am going to teach you only primarily these two aspects and then we'll also come to certain other things in addition to calculator tricks a couple of more small points i wish to make so first let us find out e power something what is e power something this is the first calculator trick i will teach you how do you find out let's say e power 0.16 they ask you to find out e power 0.16 what will you do in this calculator what are you going to do so now i can actually show you in this but then that will not be visible on screen what i'm doing is i am taking an app you know which has a calculator which is a simple calculator basic calculator non-scientific calculator and i'm going to work on it first i'll write down the step the first step is step one step two step three and these uh, kind of tricks I have again explained in respective chapters but I am summarizing all of them here just so that it is at one place. If you want to ever refer you can come back to this particular calculator tricks aspect and check for it. Okay. Step 1. What is step 1? Enter 0 0.16. So, I will enter 0 0.16 here. Okay. Then step 2. You divide this by 4096. Do not ask me why because I also do not know the reason this is a calculator trick that is all. Right. Then step 3, then whatever answer you get you add 1, 1 plus step 2. Okay. Step 4, you do into is equal to 12 times. So you are basically multiplying the same thing 12 times. So into add 1, then into is equal to 12 times, into 1, 2, 3, 4, So, you basically get 1.1735. Okay. Now, I have checked the value e power 0 0.16. You can go and google it what is e power 0 0.16. You will get a value which is close to this. right? Now, I will show this to you in a calculator on this pad uh, how it works. I have now done on my you know this calculator. I will show this to you same thing on this calculator here. We are trying to find out the value of e power 0 0.16. So, 0 0.16. You first enter that then you divide that by 4096 okay you get some value that value you add 1 right right then you do into is equal to 12 times into is equal to 1s into is equal to 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 what do you see here 1.173507 what did i write here 1.17350, 1.17350 and I got the same thing on this calculator as well, right. 
So, this is how you do e power something when the value is not given in the question and where uh, you are supposed to find out value of something using this particular calculator trick. Do not ask me logic, there must be some logic somewhere otherwise it will not have been discovered or invented. But I, I, I am not interested in getting into this logic because this is useless, meaningless for me in my life. Even for you it is meaningless because this is very, very limited purpose of uh, your examination because in real life nobody is going to ask you how to do this on a normal calculator. Either you have a scientific calculator or most of us use Excel in life. Okay. Next, second calculator trick is uh, 1 power something, uh, 1 power uh, you know uh, 10th root of something, not 1 power, it is 10th root of something or 5th root of something. So, here we will take an example of 1.888 for that what is the 10th root. I hope all of you remember your uh, childhood uh, maths. This can also be represented as 1.888 power 1 by 10. So, when you have one variable x power y and this y is not a whole number but is a rather a decimal or something like that, then how do you find out its value? Then how do you find out the value of this expression z is equal to x power y, where y is non-whole, okay, 10th root, 5th root, 6th root, 7th root, something like that, right. It is a simple decimal number, again do not come to me with recurring number of uh, you know 1 by 3 or 2 by 3 or things like that, there also you can actually apply this. So, do not worry about it, you can use the same calculator and apply and get an answer. So, now for this also I will highlight the steps, for this also there are about 5 or 6 steps. First step 1 is write down 1.888 which is basically this x value, right 1.888. Then step 2 do square root 12 times. So, you have a square root button on your calculator 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, you got some value, right. Then step 3, you subtract 1, minus 1. Then step 4, multiply with y or multiply with 1 by 10 into 1 divided by 10. You got some value. Step 5, add 1, so plus 1. Then step 6, into is equal to 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You get 1.065619. 1.065619. So, 10th root of 1.8888 is 1.065619. You can do this on Excel or somewhere and figure it out also. I am going to show it to you on uh, the calculator what we have here. So, how will we do in this calculator? 1.888, right. So, you first do square root of it 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then you subtract 1, right. Then you do into 1 by 10. So, that is divided by 10. You get a value. Then you add 1. You get a value. Into is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1.06561. 1.06561. You can go and check it out on uh, your own calculator or Excel, you will get this particular answer. So, this is the second calculator trick. Here also do not ask me the reason, logic is irrelevant. Please, if at all they ask you how to compute 10th root or by mistake some question comes where they forgot to give uh, you know 10th root value and all that, you can use this. Okay, Fair enough. Let us move to the next aspect. So friends, uh, sometimes it may be possible that instead of uh, having to use this calculator, if you know this calculator trick, it is great. However, if you do not know this calculator trick and thankfully or hopefully if the institute gives you log tables, okay, then how do you compute? So, I will show you how this is to be computed using log tables, log and anti-log. I am pretty sure most of you, most of including me, I also forgot, forget it some quite a few times. You know, I go back and see how to look at it, then I recollect, okay. So, do not worry about it, it is natural because we are not doing this on a daily basis, right. So, how do you find out 1.888 in using log tables? Before you get into that, you need to know about two things. There is something called as natural log 
and there is something known as common log. Natural log, common log is log anything to the base 10. Natural log is log anything to the base e. So, they, you know, you are supposed to use this common log, not and not the natural log. Okay, that is the first thing. Don't get confused with this base 10. Okay, that is what you are supposed to use, which is common log. Then they have asked us to find out 1.888 power 1 by 10. Uh, I hope you will remember certain functions of logarithms, what you studied in foundation uh, or your class 11, 12, wherever it may be. So let us say y is equal to 1.888 power 1 by 10. So log y, doing it log on both sides will be log 1.888 power 1 by 10 which is equal to 1 by 10 log. So in case of a logarithm, if there is a power, the power moves before the log. 1 by 10 log of 1.888. Okay. Then you have 1 by 10 log of 1.888. In logarithm, you have something called as characteristic and mantissa. Even if you do not know those terms, no problem. Ignore all of it. Just look at this simply. 1.888. When there is number called 1 here, Right, when there is a number called 1 and there is one number before the decimal. Now, it is not based on the number, it is the number of digits before the decimal. You have one digit before the decimal, which is a whole number. So, here the answer starts with decimal. If you have two digits before the decimal, then here the solution will have one whole number. If the number of digits before the decimal is only 1, then the solution will start with a decimal only. Okay, this is the first part. Now, then you have something called as 1.888. So, how do you look at it in 1.888? You actually go to log tables, provided they give you log tables, even in this form or some other form. So, you highlight this 18. Okay, and this number, this number, I'll tell you why. 1.888. 888, so first two digits are 18, so you take 18, then 8, then 8, so you take the values here. So the relevant values are 2742, which is 1, 8 and 8, then you add the value with respect to next 8, which is 19. So 2742 plus 19, which is what? 2761, 2761, so that is how you get the value. I don't know if you are able to see this on the screen, 2742, which is with respect to this 8 and 18. And then you add this 19, which is same, which is horizontally in line with this particular uh, 8. Why 19? Because that is respect, uh, that is uh, value with respect to column number 8, right? So 2761. So this value here is 0 0.2761. Now 1 by 10 of 0 0.2761 is how much? 0 0.02761. This is what log y. Now, if you have to find out the value of y, this will be anti-log of 0 0.02761, 0 0.02761. Now, how do you find out anti-log? Again, you go back to the anti-log tables, not the log tables, you go back to the anti-log tables. When you go back to the anti-log tables, you have to go and find out 0 0.02761. What is there for 0 0.02761? Come down further, you have the anti-log tables. 0 0.02, then 7, then 6. You don't have for 1, so we will take for 6. So the value is 1064 plus 1, which is 1065. This is equal to, we just put 1065. Now, now please note, just like the way when you had one whole number before the decimal, you moved it, you know, you made it a decimal number or rather the solution was starting with decimal because you have one point here, the answer is zero point something. So here ulta happens because you have 0 0.02 that there is a zero after the decimal, you move the solution one level left, right? So because there is zero here, 0, 0.0, right? The answer, whatever answer that you get, Right, you put a decimal after the first first number. Okay, you put a decimal after the first number. One point zero six five. Now, what is one point zero six five? If you go back, we have solved it. Here, we have found out the tenth root of one point eight 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 as one point zero six five six one nine. Using Clark tables also, we got the same value, which is one point zero six five. Even you have here an answer, which is we look for what zero two seven six one. Correct, that is what we look for. So here. 
there is one one decimal here so you uh, the number the solution whatever you get you start with you know you start with a one digit and then put a decimal let us say there are two decimals right if there are two decimals then you start the answer with 0 0.1065 if let's say answer is 0 0.00 2761. I am just making this up. Okay. Then your answer will be antilog of this will be 0 0.1065. But two decimals, you put it one decimal here. If there is one decimal, you put a whole number before the decimal. So that is what it is. It is a very simple logic. Do not unnecessarily get confused. This may not be asked in the exam. Even if they are asked in the exam, this is the way in which you solve it. Okay. Now we have looked at how to use the you know log and antilog tables. Next, what I, there are two more tables that are, can actually come up. One is uh, normal distribution table, normal distribution, cumulative value. This tables will be given cumulative value of, not, it is usually a standard normal distribution. They will give cumulative values in exam. This is usually given in options chapter for Black-Scholes method, okay. Without that, a problem cannot be solved, okay. So, do not bother about it. Uh, if they actually have given this, uh, you know, question without uh, giving the normal distribution values or the cumulative value of standard normal distribution without giving that, the question cannot be solved. So, necessarily they have to give you the value. So, do not worry about it unnecessarily, okay. Then you will have one more table which is the T distribution. This is in the options, derivative valuation options for portion of the chapter. Then you have T distribution. This is used for a run test. This is used in, this is used in your, uh, this one. This is used in your security analysis chapter. Okay, there also they have to give the values. Without that, there is no calculated trick in which you can compute the T value. You need not remember any T value. You need not do anything. You have to do everything based on what they give. Then this normal distribution values, they will also, they will also give you Z score or Z values. They, will, they can give you for when computing VAR. This is in risk management chapter. There also you will have the Z values for a normal distribution. That also cumulative values, they will give values in the exam. You need not remember anything. You need not remember anything with respect to, you know, varieties of cumulative values for, uh, you know, of Z scores and all of that. Do not worry about it. All those will be provided for in the exam. Okay. After doing this, then I wanted to do this. This is basically interpolation. I am, I was actually uh, surprised when one student asked, sir, what is this formula? So, interpolation exercise, I actually want to do it. At final level, some student asked me. That is why I am adding this specifically at this level. Pretty sure most of you know it. In case you have forgotten from what you have learnt in CA for inter level, then you may learn it. This is there even in FR. Okay. So, this interpolation exercise is there in FR also. What is interpolation exercise? I will tell you. So, okay. When you are asked to find IRR, right? Let us say they are asked you to find IRR. Uh, what is IRR? IRR is the rate when NPV is equal to 0. Right. You take a project, you have a cash flows, all the cash flows are adding up, you discount it at a rate. When you discount, well, let us say when you discount it at 10 percent, NPV is coming to uh, 1000 plus. Let us say when you discount it at 11 percent, NPV is coming to minus 1000. So, what is the value at which the rate, which is the rate, which is basically the IRR, the rate at which discounting rate which you use if your NPV is exactly 0. Looking at it, you can say it is 10.5. How? There is a movement of 2000 and there is a movement of 1 percentage here. Movement of 1 percentage and there is a movement of 2000. So, if the movement has to be not 2000 but exactly 1000, that is from either from 1000 to 0, plus 1000 to 0 or minus 1000 to 0, the movement has to be 1000. So, you do it by 0.5 percent, you change. If it is from bottom, you deduct 0.5. If it is from top, you add 0.5. So, the answer will be 10.5 and this NP will be 0. Now, this is a very simple way, but simple logic is what works. This formula is also same logic only, okay. Do not worry about it. Let us say at 10 percent NPV is 1654 and at 11 percent NPV is minus 10,000, minus 10,000, okay. How will you compute? You cannot do this simple logic, no? You, you can still can do, okay. But on the face of it, you will not know. So, uh, there are two ways in which I would uh, typically do. One is for a 1 percent movement, from 1654 positive, it has gone to 
10,000 negative. So, the total movement is 11,654. So, for a 1% movement. So, now it has to come down by 1654 or it has to increase by 10,000 from here. So, 1% causes a 11,654 change. How much percentage causes a 1,654 change? You can do it either 1,654 or you can do 10,000. If you do 1,654, you make adjustment here. If you do 10,000, you can make an adjustment here. So, what is it? How do you find out A is to B, C is to D, right? A, D by B, C. C is equal to A, D by B, something like that. No, whatever you remember, ratio proportions, simple logic only, right? So, 1% into 1654 divided by 11654. 1 by 11654 1, into 1654. So, 0. 0.14. So, for a 0. 0.14 percent, the change of 1654 will happen. So, 1654 has to reduce. If the NPV has to reduce, what has to go up? The interest rate has to go up. So, for to 10, you add 0.14%. So, 10.14%. Same way, ultra logic. Instead of doing 1654, you put here uh, 10,000. What will happen? For 1%, it is 11,654. For how much percent is it 10,000? Correct? So, you do same thing. 1 into... 1 10,000 divided by 11654. We get 0 0.858 or 86. So, exactly the opposite. So, f the change has to be 10,000. So, if the change has to be 10,000 from where the change has to happen from the bottom. So, it the NPV has to increase by 10. If the NPV has to increase, the rate has to decrease. So, from 11 percent, you subtract. 0.86, so 10.14, okay. Same logic is given in the term of a formula, okay. So, what is the formula? Low rate, what is low rate in our case? 10 percent, okay. We will take the same example and we will take the second example, uh, this 1654 and 10,000 and all that, okay. NPV at low rate, what is the NPV at low rate? It was 1654. What is NPV at low rate minus NPV at high rate? NPV at low rate was 1654. NPV at high rate was minus of minus 10,000. So, you are doing 11,654 into high rate minus low rate. What is high rate? 11 percent. Low rate is 10 percent. What have you done? Low rate is 10, right? So, 10 percent plus 1654 divided by 11,654 into 1. Right. So, this is what we have already done. 1654 divided by 11654 is 0 0.1412. So, 10 plus 0 0.14 into 1 which is 10.14 percent. So, this is how this formula works. Same answer what we got here, here you are putting it in terms of a formula. So, this is a very, very simple formula. Even if you use commonsensical logic, it will work. Okay. So, I wanted to do this specifically because one student asked this. So, I was actually surprised why they asked, but nevertheless, I wanted to add it so I'm so that, you know, there are no further doubts. So, these are the key tricks and uh, tips and tricks that you can use from calculator, from log table, Z score, T score, cumulative standard normal distribution, log, anti-log, E power something, something power 1 by 10, all of that we have discussed in this. All of this will be useful for you as you move forward. If you have any doubt, come back to this video. This video is there in the first chapter, introductory video with notes and calculator tricks and all of that together in one place. Okay. So, that is the intent of this particular video. I hope this is useful and please, please, you know, when you are solving the first chapter onwards, when you are moving to the first chapter onwards, follow all the instructions that I have given everywhere. Okay, and use this kind of a calculator. This is what is allowed in the exam. There is one more variety of cash show that is also allowed, but I, you know, uh, don't carry a scientific calculator or a CFA calculator, anything like that. Thanks. Okay. Now go to the first chapter.